in the previous video, we wrote down a bunch of definition. We learned to look more closely at the wave profile shapes and we learned how to define a bunch of stuff. Okay, in this video, I'm going to be doing some graphing work. But before that, I want to point out about what the heck we are, what are we graphing, Joe? What are we graphing? Okay, so I'm going to use, I guess, the pink highlighter. Okay, now when you stare at every single definition and think about how important is the wave particle in our life. Wow, Joe, quite important. Oh, yellow, yellow, yellow. So obviously, we need a graph to represent how this particular wave particle, look at this, look at this cute little red dot, ah, this red dot, we're going to have a graph to represent the position or the displacement of this particle against time. So for example, maybe I start my stopwatch, maybe here, and then after one second, the particle is here. So I plot this point. After another second, the particle is here, then I plot this point. So if I have something moving up and down, and then if time passes, here's what it will look like if I draw. Okay? So you don't draw first, you watch first. Let's say my particle is here. And you know particle is doing what particle does. It moves up, it comes down, moves up again. Particle moves like that, right? So I'm just going to simulate a particle moving up and down, up and down, up and down. Teacher, if you throw like that, I, I see what, oh, where is my graph? How to get sinusoidal? Don't worry. All I need to do is to move my hand left and right. I mean, this is very ugly, left and right, but you get the idea. Okay, maybe I'll repeat again. So I'm drawing something up and down, up and down, up and down. And the way for me to get that sinusoidal shape is to press play and drag the paper, I will get this shape. Of course, I can't drag my computer, but I can drag my writing tablet. You can drag your paper. So you can pick up a scrap piece of paper. You just try and see, you draw up and down, up and down. If you drag the paper, you will get this shape. Because what dragging the paper means is you are actually plotting the position at different times. Okay? So we are looking at the graph of displacement of wave particle. So I'm going to carefully draw the axis now. Okay, and my x-axis is time. So this would be time. T measured in seconds. Okay, and we are drawing a graph of displacement of wave particles. So this would be displacement. Normally, We'll use X or Y. Today I'll use Y, but don't get too complacent. A question can use whatever question wants. Okay. We gotta adapt. That's life, right? Life can do whatever they want with you. You can adapt and grow and learn. So the displacement here is defined as Y. Sometimes it's X. Sometimes they don't bother to label it, you know, with a with an alphabet or a symbol. But this is displacement. Okay. So remember how we are going to sketch the sinusoidal wave front. So this is what I'll do now. I'll sketch a pretty quick sinusoidal shape. So tip to draw this, if let's say you don't have boxes to align yourself with, like a blank piece of paper, is to just roughly mark out where the position of the wave is while trying your best to maintain the same amplitude, like what I did with the dots at the back. And then, of course, this is not perfect because I just judge with my Asian eyeballs, but it's good enough. Okay. So as long as it looks reasonably uniform, it doesn't suddenly become close together or far apart, then I guess we're good. Okay, so something like this. And this uh, maximum displacement that should always be the same is amplitude. We have defined this in the last video. And this minimum displacement that should also be the same is negative A. Okay. So right now, what is interesting is, this is time. So this one complete cycle, let's say I look at, you know, crest to crest. This is not crest, by the way. Cannot label them, they are not crest, because it's not a position. So this distance that look like crest to crest, here to here is T, which is the time taken for the wave profile to travel from, for one wave shape. 
okay? So this is period because you imagine the particle travel down, come back up again. So these are the different, different position of the particles, okay? So this is the displacement of the particle and the time. I don't care about other particles. They are infinite particles in your uh, wave profile. But what we care about is we just choose one particle and we plot its position against time. Okay, so that's what we're doing now, plotting the position against time. A quick shortcut here is that when you see t, it means that one complete cycle is one period. So this is t, meaning here will be 2t, and this would be 3t. A lot of past year questions got asked students to label the axis. A student always confusion. Don't confuse, okay? Y-axis is always displacement. How far have the particle traveled? This is a single wave particle. A wave particle. One wave particle. And as different, different time, the particle will be at different, different position. Okay? If you're having trouble visualizing that graph, here are two graphs. Here's a simulation again to help you. Just be aware that you really need to understand this, okay? So right now, if I look at this particle, the particle has a displacement of zero, okay? Notice that, hang on, my big head is blocking, but notice that this axis in the blue graph is time, okay? So right now, since this one is plotted against time, but this is the position of the particle, I'm just going to play this to show you what it looks like, okay? So if I'm going to press play, you will realize that this is the wave pattern that we've been staring at where the particle is in place and it moves up and down. So think of the human wave. When the human wave happens in the stadium, the human doesn't go from one end to a stadium to the other end of the stadium, right? So right now, this particle that is moving up and down, it's just stay there, like the transverse wave, it will stay there. Hey, teacher, where did the particle go? Oh, wait, this the particle didn't go anywhere. This axis is time. Because it's the time axis, what we are actually looking at is, is where the particle is. So I'm just going to, like, whoops, slow down for a bit and then play for a little bit. Maybe I'll play and I pause. Okay, now look here. The displacement of this particle is slightly more than one box. Notice that the displacement of the particle here is slightly more than one box. And this distance from the origin, the horizontal distance from the origin to the particle, is the time. The time between pressing play and pressing pause. Okay? So if I reset this, I press play, I press pause. Displacement of the particle is at amplitude, or close to amplitude. Displacement of the particle is at amplitude. I press play. I press pause. That time interval is from the origin to this point. Okay, so now if let's say, for example, I press play and then I press pause when this particle complete one oscillation, how would that look like? Let me reset. Okay, so one oscillation, uh, go down, come up, return. Look at this particle looks like one wavelength, but we can't call this wavelength because why, again, what's behind my head? Time. So this is actually period. Time taken for the particle to travel one cycle. Let's do it again. One cycle, stare at this red particle here on the first graph. Down, up, down. Down, up, down. So here to here is one period. Again, because this is time. Okay, so because of this, it's very, very important to check your axis. What is the graph? Is it time? Are we looking at one single particle and where the particle is at different, different time? Ta-da! Okay, so the only thing to take away here is that at the end of the day, when we use some mathematics, this is one complete cycle or circle. T has an angle equivalence of 360. That will be our next video. Okay, so we're just going to leave this at here and think about the second graph. So this second graph is a graph of displacement. So let's write this together. Displacement 
y in meter or cm. This one again, distance. I can follow the simulation and call this distance from source, or to be lazy, I can just call this position x. Okay, so imagine this is your wave source. Maybe I'll draw a loudspeaker for variety. Okay, and I am looking at okay, maybe not the loudspeaker. Hmm, what should I do? Ah, I can do this. I can have a vibrator or a dipper here. Okay, like this. This is my wave source. I can have the vibrator here. The distance that I'm measuring is from here all the way like that. Ah, I measure the distance from the pipe horizontally. Okay, this is the distance that I'm measuring. So right now, if I turn on the pipe, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to establish a wave pattern. I can even give you a graph like that. Okay, and then I'll press the pause button anywhere I want. So maybe here, and I draw this shape. You might be thinking, Miss, why this shape oh, uh, look like the amplitude dropping one? Ah, that's because what we are drawing in our notes are the very ideal wave. It won't lose energy. Oh my God, lah. we know that the further the wave travel, the more energy it is lost. Okay, so in this case, we are pretending that it doesn't happen, although it does all the time. Okay, and we will see more of that in the next video. But this one, oh, I, uh... so what we're doing is we're actually trying to draw this shape after we pause. Okay, we are drawing the wave profile. We are trying to say that, well, if the particle is at 1 cm, the displacement is zero. If the particle is at 1.5 cm, the displacement is maximum. If the particle is at 3 cm, the displacement is minimum. Oh, different, different particle, one single time. Okay, so I've done the liberty to sketch out the sinusoidal wave shape first. This is, as usual, the amplitude. And this one down here will be negative A. Okay, we measure from here to here or we measure from here to here. Okay, notice that this one, the x-axis, is the distance from the source in meter. All right, so it's the distance from the pipe. Okay, so if this is the distance from the pipe, what we are looking at is, you know, uh, the different, different particle have different displacement. This is the picture that we have been drawing all this while before I brought in the, va the variable of time. It would be this picture, okay? This one right here, the orange one, okay? So let's uh, look at this and, oops, maybe I'll, okay, there we go. So, if I'm going to reset this, and just, I guess push the particle back, you realize that this particle, this first position, the particle has zero displacement, okay? This position, the particle has one cm, two, two boxes, two and a half boxes. So at different, different point, the particle will have different, different displacement. So when we say displacement and distance against the source, what we are drawing is what we are used to seeing, the actual picture of the shape that we've been drawing, the wave that we've been drawing, this one. And because it is distance on the x-axis, this is your wavelength. This is the picture that we've been drawing so far, and we just added an axis. So we will label wavelength. This is crest, crest, crest. This is trow, 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 okay? And that's why this is lambda, two lambda, three lambda, okay? So although on the surface level, these two graphs are identical, we get very different information from the graph. If it's time, then one complete cycle is period. 360 degree on your sine graph, okay? If it's distance or position, 
then 360 degree is lambda. All right. So in the end of the day, right, the reason why we need two graphs is because the first one, we follow the TikTok of a single particle. It's like I only stare at the particle and I plot the position of the particle against type, just one particle. This graph will be a snapshot of the wave profile. That's why, because it's a snapshot of the wave profile, crest to crest or any similar points are lambda. Okay, very different. Uh, hello. So pretty important to read the question. Look at the axis and just double check to make sure that you are representing the same thing. The shape is the same. Okay, go check out some examples. Go draw some graph. Interpret some graph from the MCQs. I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.